Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Croatian Police Museum, taking a look at some of their cool pieces of Croatian firearms history. And today we have a Manda 50 cal single shot Croatian sniper rifle. Now this is a rifle that was specially requested, well, requested by the Croatian Special Police in 1991, when the Homeland War began. Now why the Special Police, you might ask? Well, when the war began, Croatia didn't have any substantial military forces. They'd originally had a territorial defense force, a national guard, essentially. But those guys had all been disarmed by the Yugoslav army before Croatia got its independence, leaving only the police as the armed forces within Croatia. Now, within the police were the special police, which were essentially SWAT teams. And each police district had a SWAT team, and then there was one uh, more, more professional, more elite, more trained uh, high-level national special police unit. So when the war began, those guys were the best trained, most elite soldiers that Croatia had. And thus they're the ones who are going to be doing things like getting special equipment, like 50 caliber anti-material sniper rifles. So they request a rifle like this, and the Croatian Ministry of the Interior actually does the development and the production. Specifically, the Department of Weapons, Special Equipment, and Technical Protection of the Ministry of the Interior. So an engineer there by the name of Peter Vucetic uh, comes up with this design, does some experimentation, does some development, and comes up with a rifle that is effective, simple, relatively easy to produce, and they would go on to make a grand total of 84 of these between 1991 and when production ended approximately 1994. So. Let's take a look at what he actually came up with. All right, so we have a simple bolt action system here. Lift the bolt, retract. There is a bolt release on the opposite side, which I'll show you in a moment. So there is the bolt design that they came up with, just two really big locking lugs. This was intended to be relatively easy to produce. Then we have on the back a safety. So this, unfortunately, this one is missing the firing pin spring, so it doesn't quite work like it's supposed to. But um, when it when the bolt is being open, opened, the firing pin is cammed up here, where uh, this holds the firing back pin back, so it can't fire out of battery. When you lock the bolt in place, it lines the firing pin up right there, so that it's held back. And when you pull the trigger, it drops forward and fires. Um, and then this plunger-looking um, end of the firing pin can be used as a safety. You pull it back, rotate it out of the way, much like that on a Swiss Schmidt Rubin design. That is your manual safety. The rifles were fitted with uh, pretty big, chonky, effective muzzle brakes here. Um, the barrels, interestingly enough, are actually turned down from Browning M2 50 caliber barrels, because that's essentially the only 50 caliber barrel that the Croatian Ministry of the Interior had access to at this time. So they turned them down, use them for precision rifle barrels. The only markings on here are the serial numbers. There's one on the lower and one on the upper. Um, this is number 69 out of 84 made. The gun was called the Manda, uh, actually named after the designer's sister, but that's not marked anywhere on it. For a pistol grip, they simply used the M70 AK pistol grip. It's kind of cool. And then a very simple, practical, easy to make, effective buttstock, which is a long metal tube with a rubber recoil pad on it. Vutetic was heavily inspired by World War II anti-tank, anti-material rifles. Uh, spent a fair amount of time in museums, actually, looking at uh, you know, other com uh, comparable guns while he was doing the design for the Manda. The scope mounting system, to me, is a really interesting part of this. So uh, the scopes that were used were 3.5 to 10 power loopholes. They were sourced in Germany, and they're fitted with a couple of things. First off, a bubble level here that flips up. These were intended to be fired from a minimum, well the minimum range on the BDC cam is 300 meters out to a maximum of 1,000 meters, and they found that making sure that you have the, the rifle exactly level is, of course, a very important element in being able to make hits out to 1,000 meters. And when I say BDC cam, there literally is a BDC cam, because they didn't have access to something like a, you know, a 20 minute or a 40 minute angled scope mount, but they needed something like that to properly shoot out to the thousand meter ranges that they wanted to achieve. So instead, 
what Vucetic did was develop a BDC cam in his scope base. So you can see the numbers here on the side. They line up with a marking tab down here. But essentially you've got a series of uh, eight flat surfaces that range from 300 meters out to 1,000 meters, raising the scope up. So pick your range, zero it at that range, and then you should be pretty darn close to on uh, at extended distances. The bipod legs just have a spring-loaded collar here. Pull that back and they will rotate forward. Pull them back again and rotate up and they will also rotate back. Personally, I can really see a comparison to the, the Degturev, the PTRD-41 in this rifle. It doesn't, obviously it doesn't have the recoil system that the PTRD did, but it is a very simple, minimalistic, but efficient and effective 50 caliber anti-material rifle. These rifles served in the Croatian Homeland War. A couple of them actually ended up in Kosovo, although it's not entirely clear to me how. When the war in Croatia ended in 1996, the special police units all essentially reverted from being military or paramilitary units back to being just um, elite police SWAT teams. And as a SWAT team, they really had no need for a rifle like this. So these essentially left military service around 1996 uh, in Croatia, and there aren't that many of them left. So it was very cool to get a chance to take a look at this one. A big thanks to the Croatian Police Museum for that opportunity. If you find yourself in Zagreb with uh, needing something to do, definitely consider stopping by and checking out the museum. There's a bunch of cool stuff on display here. Thanks for watching.